Hi, I'm Karan Thapar. Over the last few years, I hope you've been watching my program, The Interview on the Wire. During that period, I've interviewed doctors, politicians, businessmen, scientists, authors, and even the occasional Nobel laureate. For me, it's been exciting. I hope it's been enjoyable for you. But these, as you know, are tough times. And if this program is going to remain bold, independent, and sometimes even defiant, then I think we need your support. At the end of the day, it's a truism, but editorial independence is best defended by the viewers. So if you would like this program to remain the way it is, forthright, outspoken, and interesting, then would you consider supporting us? All you have to do is to click on the description at the bottom. But more than anything else, I hope you will continue to watch the interview. Your viewership means an awful lot to me. Hello and welcome to a special interview for The Wire. Is it understandable that the State Bank of India should require three and a half months extra time to make available details of the electoral bond scheme, thus pushing the deadline to the 30th of June? Or is it inexplicable, unjustified and unwarranted? Joining me to answer that key question is former Finance Secretary Subhash Chandra Garg. Mr. Garg was in fact also Economic Affairs Secretary when electoral bonds were first introduced. Mr. Garg, in its February 15th order, the Supreme Court asked the State Bank of India to make available six simple bits of information. Who purchased the bonds, the date and the amount, and also which party received the bonds when they were in cash and the amount. The court gave the SBI three weeks to furnish this information by the 6th of March. In response, the SBI has asked for three and a half months more, pushing the deadline to June the 30th. Is this extra time justified or is it inexplicable and unwarranted? See, the information which the Supreme Court has asked is very simple information. One side is the information about the buyers who bought the bonds. And for them, uh, the information to, provide, to be provided is who bought the bond, of what denomination, and on what, what date. Essentially, the buyer-wise information of total bonds purchased. That is what is the information on one side. The second information is that uh, which party encashed how much of the electoral bonds. Again, you can provide this, this denomination wise. The second information is political party wise, uh, the proceeds received from the electoral bonds. These are the two simple information. These are all available in the account of the, uh, the SBI uh, because these buy buyers also had either the accounts or they deposited cash. Um, and this was temporarily kept into uh, an account there, um, right? So this information is not something which requires any uh, any time to be to be delivered. This is this must be a ready information. So the demand for three and a half months more time, you're saying, is not just inexplicable; it's also unjustified. What SBI seems to have said is that they will collate the information for each bond that each bond who bought and who then delivered to which political party. Now, this information, in my assessment, uh, is not possible to be generated. This information is not what even the court has asked for. And therefore, using this as an excuse for getting three months time is actually ultimately going to be told that we can't generate this information. So this is an excuse. Let me just clarify that critical point you made for the audience. The SBI has either deliberately misinterpreted or accidentally misconstrued what they were asked by the Supreme Court to do. They have gone one step further and claimed that they need to collate information. They were not asked to collate information and therefore they are claiming that they are required to do something much more long drawn and complicated than they were actually asked to do. 
They have therefore provided themselves an excuse for not being able to do something simple within the limited time frame of three weeks by claiming that they have to do something much more complicated that requires longer. In other words, they've created an excuse for their own delay. That's That seems to be the case as far as I understand. Now, one other quick question. It's taken the SBI 17 days to decide that they cannot meet the original deadline set by the Supreme Court of the 6th of March. Why could that answer not have been given within 24 hours or at the most a couple of days? Why did they need 17 days to say we can't do what you're asking us to do? See, the information which the court asked cannot be, uh, you, you can't offer an excuse for that. So uh, they have taken time, perhaps, that the collation kind of information will take time. But the test there to my mind is that in the 16 or 17 days time which they had, did they collate even one single bond information or one single buyer information? And what much time they uh, it took them to do it? That would have been some case that if you require uh, a day to collate the information for one bond, then you need this much time or you do it for 100 bonds a day. That could have been offered as something convincing. Though, as I said, this is neither possible to generate that information, nor is it required. So to, to create that kind of uh, alibi uh, to say that we will need this information to be generated, they delayed it. They have not asked uh, for time to provide the information which the, the court probably asked and they had earlier provided to the court also in sealed cover. You're making a very important point. First of all, you're saying during the 17 days that they've taken before they gave their answer to say we can't do it in this time, did they collate even one bit of information? Because if they did, they haven't said so. And the second thing you're saying, which is equally important, is on what basis do they claim they need three and a half months more to the 30th of June? There must be some basis for saying that collating will take that long. That basis they haven't provided either. Right. In fact, the interesting thing is it suggests that they used 17 days to create the belief that they were required to do something much more complicated that would take time. That myth or that belief took 17 days for them to think of. That's why they needed 17 days before they threw up their hands and said, we can't do it. The, I, I think it will be interesting to watch the proof of work, what kind of work they did. Let uh, me ask not, you. That has not been given in the uh, petition they filed. They simply said these are... 22,000 uh, data sets on this side, this side, two dif different silos, it will take time. But whether they've been able to do it, even for uh, a few cases, that has not been stated in the petition. What do you think is the amount of time they would actually need to give the simple six bits of information the Supreme Court asked for? Not more than a day. You mean that not more than a day? Yeah, that information is readily available. You have buyer-wise account. In the buyer-wise account, you uh, simply uh, generate that information that who had bought for how much uh, of the electoral bonds. That's all. And even division in the form of de uh, denomination-wise information is not required. Whether you bought 10 crores bond of one crore each, uh, or you bought many more bonds of 10 lakh each is immaterial. What is material is that which boy, buyer bought how much of the electoral bond. That is one simple sum. So on, let us say, 12th of March, a particular buyer bought bond of 10 crore. That information is available uh, at the click of the button on, on its account. All that it need to generate is that these are the buyers and they bought this much amount of bond on this and this date, that's it. That information is uh, is as readily as, as available as your bank account would also tell you. So you're saying, and I'm repeating this because I think it will amuse the audience, but it's a very important point you made, that something that could be made available 
within 24 hours. Something which you said is available at the click of a button. They are claiming they couldn't do in the original three weeks given to them. And in fact, they've now asked for three and a half months more. Well, I, 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 there is a small difference. They're not asking time for that. Quite right. They're, they're asking time they're for the more complicated thing that they were not asked to do. Something which they have not been asked to do and which, in my judgment, cannot be ever generated. Quite right. But the interesting thing is that by creating this bogey of something more complicated, they provided themselves an excuse for demanding more time. But the truth is, they were never asked to do anything complicated. They were asked for simple information. And as regards that simple information, you're saying it could have been made available in 24 hours flat, full stop. That's why I have publicly termed that as a very lame excuse. Uh, the excuse which will not hold water. Is it not the case, Mr. Garg, that in 2019, the state bank gave electoral bond details up to that date to the Supreme Court in a sealed envelope? And if it could do so then, it can clearly do so now very easily and very quickly. I, uh, so that information was given in sealed cover. That information has not been uh, sort of placed into the public domain. But I'll assume that that information would be precisely what I'm saying, that which buyer bought how much of the electoral bonds of amount and on what date. That information which the Supreme Court has asked now for, for the period which was specified earlier was given earlier. Quite right. And if they could give that information for an earlier period fairly promptly in a sealed envelope, they can give information for a second period of five years equally promptly, equally quickly. They did not ask for any time at that time. Quite right. That's another very important point. They didn't ask for time in 2019. Why are they asking for time now? Very good point. Now, in an interview that he gave me on Tuesday, Justice Deepak Gupta said he was part of a bench which in 2019 had ordered the state bank to maintain records of electoral bonds. He then said, and I'm quoting him, once the court had directed that you keep this information, it was their bounden duty to keep it in such a manner that when a court asks them to disclose it, they should disclose it as early as possible, not that they take months to disclose it. So if the bank hasn't maintained records, as they were told by the Supreme Court to do in 2019, doesn't it follow that the bank is guilty of neglect, possibly even contempt of court? See, that's not even required. The, the guidelines for the scheme specified very clearly that when someone applies for the bond, what is the information which it will submit? In that form, it will the buyer will state that I want to buy the bonds of this denomination and this number. Uh, and that total up to the amount of the total bonds to be purchased. And then it offers a check or a direction that this much amount uh, should be debited from my account. This is the information which is required to be uh, um, to be maintained or the pain slip or the application to be um, made at the time of the buy buying the bond. This is available for all. When the SPI says that in one silo, I have this information, which is buyer wise information for the bonds bought. That information is available. I don't think after Supreme Court asked for maintaining the information, any additional information was required to be maintained or was maintained. I am not aware for that. In my judgment, it was not required. The original scheme itself provided. Likewise, from the, uh, uh, the political party's point of view, when you deposit the, uh, the bond to be uh, credited into their account, you would fill in a pay slip uh, in which you will say that these 10 bonds are attached of this denomination and this amount. Uh, and therefore, please credit this amount into my account. So that is the second information which goes into the second silo. These two silos were not to be um, kept together so that you can't connect. There is also, um, uh, I, I think this is public information by now. It was even earlier in 2018, um, 
uh, every bond uh, carries a an invisible number it's not visible uh, on the on the on the uh, face of the bond it is on it, it was built in as a security measure so that people don't deposit any fake bonds even when the term of the bond uh, was only 14 days or so uh, uh, the possibility that somebody might uh, print a fake bond and bring it to enable that to be cross checked the security number was built into but that number is not to be kept and it was not kept on either when the somebody buys the bond. I understand, but can that number now be used if required? Can that number now be used if required to collate between the purchaser and the recipient? No, because suppose for a minute you uh, uh, see the bond and you discover the number. But that today, the identity of the bond, who had bought and who had deposit, who has deposited is lost today that identity is not uh, established so uh, there are now 15000 odd crores bond uh, or 22000 bonds as the sbi says which bond was bought by whom and which bond was deposited by which political party that record is not available because none of them either the buyer but let's not complicate the story because it is beginning to now look as if we're contradicting what you said earlier, which is why I'm pausing you and interrupting you because it's important we should give a clear answer to the audience. The collation may not be possible, but they were yes. not asked the SBI to collate. What That's is correct. possible and what you said could be done within 24 hours as at a click of a button is to provide the simple information the Supreme Court wanted, i.e., who bought the bonds, when they bought them, what the amount was, and secondly, which party received them, when they encashed them, and what the amount was. That simple information is available, but collating whether it was bond A and bond B may be difficult to do. Is that the simple truth? That's what I said. Collation is impossible. What about the point Justice Gupta made? That if the state bank was told by a bench that he was a part of in 2019, please maintain records, that means you maintain the record in such a way that you can make it immediately available when a court asks for it, not require three and a half months to do so. And if they, if they are claiming they need three and a half months, then clearly they haven't maintained their records properly. No, I, that's what I said. The record which was to be maintained as per the original in, uh, scheme is sufficient to provide the information which the Supreme Court has asked now. Quite right, That's which is why the bank has tied itself in knots. It's tied itself in knots by this explanation. Therefore, no additional information was required to be maintained by the SPI uh, uh, to provide the information. Now, let me come to the guidelines for the electoral bond scheme of 2018. I'm referring to clause 7.4. This is what clause 7.4 says. The information furnished by the buyer shall be treated as confidential, except, this is the important thing, except when demanded by a competent court or any law enforcement agency. So the guidelines themselves stipulate that the information provided by the buyer will be made available to a competent court and presumably that means made available in the shortest possible time, not over a duration of three and a half months. In failing to give to the Supreme Court the information they asked for, they have failed to live up to their own guidelines. So the guidelines had this provision because uh, uh, there may be certain crimes, money laundering, etc., which might be committed using the bonds. So if there is any criminal case or any case in the court where the court demands that some particular bond or the amount, etc., of the bonds purchased by some particular party should be intimated to the court, it should be provided. Uh, so there is no, there was no absolute immunity uh, for information relating Absolutely. to... Absolutely. And therefore, the guidelines catered for the fact that if a court asks for information, you will provide it. You don't need this three and a half month extra period to do so. What I'm saying is by claiming they need three and a half extra months, they're in breach of their guidelines. 
they are in breach of the guidelines they are in breach of the co- uh, court order many people suspect mr gal that the sbi is asking for extra time because it wants to delay making the information available until after the elections are over in turn this suggests that the way that the information they have could be incriminating and possibly potentially embarrassing for the government so do you feel that it's hiding these details or delaying making the details public because it's been asked by the government to do so see i have no uh, information whether the government asked sbi to do it or not but on the basic principle of the bond and here i have a very different position i have said this the 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 buyers were given this in, immunity in the sense that they can buy bonds beyond if even if they are loss 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 making companies or beyond 7.5% of their profits and they can give it, give it to the political parties without that being but, disclosed but the supreme court has struck that impunity correct. down as so, unconstitutional and long that's correct so now that is the law of the land uh, the supreme court struck that down if the government has objection to that and in my judgment it should have that because the buyers are being left in the lurch in but the but the government has not objected to the supreme okay. court so they should object in case they have but they haven't they haven't ask, my don't... question is simple is the government now giving instructions to the sbi is that what you suspect to deliberately delay things till after the elections are over because they are scared that the details could be embarrassing i don't want to speculate uh, but the facts of the case do suggest that spi is uh, doing something or trying to create uh, an alibi or an excuse for delaying this information now who wants it to be delayed i have no reason to uh, sort of comment on well the spi itself would not have any reason to delay matters of its own it would only do so because it's been instructed by the government and since it's a 100% government owned bank virtually they would have to follow those orders it it might be the case it, i i i can't say it with because i have no information on that absolutely no one can say so with certainty but that is a logical inference to draw isn't it yes you can draw that logical in uh, in fairness now so far and we are talking about thursday lunch time so far the supreme court has not responded to the sbi petition and the deadline to submit details to the election commission was yesterday the 6th of march since that deadline has not been amended or stayed is the sbi already guilty of contempt of court and in fact the association for democratic reforms has filed a contempt of court case against them yeah clearly i think this seems to be the clear case that they are in in contempt has this become a test case for the state bank of india's image and integrity i i don't want to get into that uh, the spi brass might have uh, sort of considered these matters before they went that there would be certain because i i think hardly anybody find this excuse to be sufficient and they are uh, probably uh, on the back foot having done this but um, what uh, went into their minds when they tried to create this uh, excuse uh, to buy time or whatever i think this is for uh, for the sbi i i i think it shouldn't shouldn't have been done uh, the sbi is uh, is a much more um, respected bank it should not have done it but if they have done it they might have calculated their costs and benefits will the top management of the sbi be feeling a little embarrassed today it's for the sbi top management to feel not for us to say but given that they are professional bankers or at least like to believe they are professional bankers would they feel embarrassed by what they've been required to say to the supreme court i i leave it to uh, for the sbi management to sort of assess as i said costs and benefits of what they done now that a contempt of court case has been brought against the sbi by the association for democratic reforms what will be the impact if they are found guilty 
let us see how it proceeds in the court. Uh, obviously, if the court finds them guilty, uh, there are uh, uh, the, the the court has be has punished people in the past, but it's it's for the court to take a view, uh, uh, weighing what kind of uh, seriousness and um, uh, at, at the plea which they have made. Uh, okay. Let us see that it's for the court uh, to take a view. Let me end by just repeating what I think is one of the most important things you've said, speaking both as a former economic affairs secretary and a former finance secretary. You said the SBI does not require more than a day to make available the information it was asked to provide. It could be made available, as you said, at the click of a button. What the SBI has instead done is to concoct a claim that they've been asked to collate information which they were not asked to do. And as you pointed out, that claim provided them with an excuse to ask for three and a half months more. But that was for time for something no one asked them to do. They were not required to do. And as you said, they may not even be able to do. What right. they were asked to do could have been done within 24 hours. I leave right. that because I think that is a very important message for the audience. And the audience can now conclude whether the SBI has deliberately concocted an excuse to say it can't meet the deadline or were they asked by the government to do so. I leave that for the audience to decide. For you them. can draw their own conclusions. That's correct. <laughs> Mr. Garth, thank you very much for talking to me. Thank you very much, Karan. Thank you. Hi, I'm Karan Thapar. Over the last few years, I hope you've been watching my program, The Interview on The Wire. During that period, I've interviewed doctors, politicians, businessmen, scientists, authors, and even the occasional Nobel laureate. For me, it's been exciting. I hope it's been enjoyable for you. But these, as you know, are tough times. And if this program is going to remain bold, independent, and sometimes even defiant, then I think we need your support. At the end of the day, it's a truism, but editorial independence is best defended by the viewers. So if you would like this program to remain the way it is, forthright, outspoken, and interesting, then would you consider supporting us? All you have to do is to click on the description at the bottom. But more than anything else, I hope you will continue to watch the interview. Your viewership means an awful lot to me.